कंथापुर चैप्टर टू टू टेल यू द ट्रूथ बड़े खान डिड नॉट स्टे इन कंथापुर बींग ए मोहम्मडन ही कुड स्टे नीदर इन द पोटर स्ट्रीट नोर इन द शुद्ध स्ट्रीट एंड यू डोंट ऑफ कोर्स एक्सपेक्ट हिम टू लिव इन द ब्राह्मण स्ट्रीट सो ही वेंट टू पटवारी नंजूडिया एंड ग्राउल्ड एट हिम एंड द पटवारी ट्रैम्बल्ड एंड लिस्ट एंड सेड ही कुड डू नथिंग ओनली द पटेल कैन डू समथिंग देन स्टेट वेंट बड़े खान टू द पटेल एंड सेड हे पटेल द गवर्नमेंट हैज सेंट मी हियर एंड आई नीड ए हाउस टू लिव इन सेड पटेल रंगे गौड़ा क्रॉसिंग द थ्रेश होल्ड ऑन टू द वरेंदा ए हाउस वेल यू कैन लुक राउंड एंड सी आई कॉन्ट थिंक ऑफ वन फॉर द मोमेंट ही ओपन हिज बीटल बैग एंड केयरफुली टेकिंग ए टबैको लीफ He seated himself and wiping the tobacco leaf against the dhoti he put it into his mouth and then put an areca nut with it and began to munch Bade Khan was getting restless not only did but the Patel look indifferent but he hadn't even asked Bade Khan to seat himself so he went up the three steps and sat by a pillar his feet hanging down the veranda and his stick between his legs they were silent for a moment then he chenna cried range goda turning towards the inner courtyard you had better to go to the big field and see whether those sons of concubines are planting well and tell mother to hurry back before midday and fill the carts with sacks tomorrow is the fair Meanwhile the cattle were coming out of the main door the whitey the vlochi and the one horned one and lakshmi and gori and then the bulls and buffaloes and they hurried down the steps ringing their bells and banging their clogs and young siddha was behind them his stick in his hand and the dung basket on his head Bade Khan could not see Range Goda and he spat nervously into the gutter and sat dropping the lathi ring on the steps Range Goda looked up and then put a lime smeared betel leaf into his mouth and said so you want a house police sahib i am sorry i have none to offer you you are the representative of the government and i have a right to ask you to offer me a house representative of the government repeated the patel yes i am but the government does not pay me to find houses for the police i am here to collect revenue so you are a traitor to your salt givers i am not a traitor i am telling you what is the law i didn't know you were such a learned lawyer too laughed bade khan but a final word will you oblige me by procuring me a house or not no police sahib i tell you humbly i cannot i am not the owner of the whole village but if there is anyone who is ready to offer you a house please take it and turn it into a palace i can see no objection to that he still munched his tobacco and pasting the bitter leaves with lime he put them into his mouth and munched on You don't know who you are speaking to Bade Khan grunted between his teeth as he rose I know I have the honor of speaking to a policeman the Patel answered in a sing-song way meanwhile his grandson the little puttu came out and he took the child in his arms and laid him on his lap and tickled him between the armpits to make him laugh Bade Khan went down one step two steps three steps and standing on the gutter slab growled at the patel the first time i corner you i shall squash you like a bug enough enough of that answered the patel indifferently you better take care not to warm your hands with others money for that would take you straight to the people tree oh you spat bade khan trying not to swear and once he was by sampanna's courtyard he began to grumble and growl and he marched on thumping over the heavy boulders of the street at the temple square he gave such a reeling kick to the one-eared cur that it went groaning through the porter street 
groaning and barking through the porter street and the prior street till all the dogs began to bark and all the cocks began to crow and a donkey somewhere raised a fine welcoming bray so bade khan went straight to the skeffington coffee estate and he said your excellency a house to live in and mr skeffington turned to his butler and said give him a hut and the butler went to the mestri's quarters and opened a tin shed and bade khan went in and looked at the plastered floor and barred windows and the well nearby and he said this will do and going this way and that he chose a priya woman among the lonely ones and she brought along her clay pots and her mats and her brooms and he gave her a very warm full bed the next day and the day after and the day after that we saw nothing more of bade khan some said he went to bring the police inspector others said he was only a passing policeman who had come to squeeze money out of people but on the fourth or fifth day postman surappa went up the front house steps and seating himself by grandfather ramanna asked for a pinch of snuff and told him just in passing that there was a policeman of some sort in the skeffington estate and they all cried out and said o oh, surappa you had better tell those tales to white washed walls nobody who has eyes to see and ears to hear will believe in such a crow and sparrow story it was a passing policeman and he wanted to make money by terrorizing the ignorant one has seen so many of these fellows and once they have a rupee in their hand or a dozen coconuts or a measure of rice they walk away and are never heard of again but waterfall venkamma would have none of this policemen do not come along like this in these civilized days she mocked i know why they come they come because of this murthy and all this gandhi affair he with his kitchen she friends and all this bragging city talk and she spat into the street and as everybody knew she had no particular love for murthy he had refused her second daughter for whom bridegroom after bridegroom was being sought and she was nearing the age and then there was that other affair murthy was so often at the next house woman's kitchen as she used to say since that shankar jayanti murthy was always to be seen going up the kanaiya house steps and then he would come out sometimes in one hour sometimes in two hours and sometimes in three hours and he even took others of his gang with him they said rangamma's house was now becoming something of a congress house and there they were always piling books and books and they had even brought spinning wheels from the city the expulsion of jai ramchar from kanthapur had made a big noise in the city and the karwar congress committee had written to murthy to go and see them and when he had gone to see them they had given him books and papers and spinning wheels and all this for nothing it was said and that was why our boys were so busy now they went to the shudra quarters and the potter's quarters and the weaver's quarters and they cried free spinning wheels in the name of the mahatma and it was murthy who came to the brahmin street sister says he to nose scratching nanjamma sister the congress is giving away free spinning wheels will you spin sister you see you have nothing to do in the afternoons after the vessels are washed and the water drawn and if you spin just one hour a day you can have a body's cloth of any color or breadth you like one body's cloth per month and a sari every 6 months and during the first month the cotton is given free may i ask one thing murthy how much has one to pay nothing sister i tell you the congress gives it free and why should the congress give it free because millions and millions of yards of foreign cloth come to this country and everything foreign makes us poor and pollutes us 
to wear clothes spun and woven with your own god given hands is sacred says the mahatma and it gives work to the workless and work to the lazy and if you don't need the cloth sister well you can say give it away to the poor and we will give it to the poor our country is being bled to death by foreigners we have to protect our mother nanjamma does not know what all this is about brahmins do not spin do they my son we have weavers in the village there is chennaiya and rangaiya yes sister but they buy foreign yarn and foreign yarn is bought with our money and all this money goes across the oceans our gold should be in our country and our cotton should be in our country imagine sister says he seating himself you grow rice in the fields then you have mill agents that come from sholapur and bombay and offer you very tempting rates they pay you 19 rupees a khanda o paddy instead of 18 rupees 8 annas as gold bengal sumanna or mota madanna would pay they will even pay you 19 rupees and 2 annas if you will sell more than 20 khandas then they take it away and put it into huge mills brought from their own country and run by their own men and when the rice is husked and washed and is nothing but pulp they sell it to baniya ramanlal or chotalal who send it by train to baniya bapanlal and motilal and bapanlal and motilal send it to the tipur fair and subha chatti and drama chatti will cart 20 sacks of it home and then you have no rice before harvests and there is your granddaughter's marriage for example or your second daughter is pregnant and the whole village is to be invited for the seventh month ceremony you go to subha chatti and say hey chatti have you fine rice why i have fine white rice says he and shows you rice white and small as pearls all husked and washed in the city and you say this looks beautiful rice and you pay 1 rupee for every 3 and a half years now tell me nanjama how much does husking rangi ask from you for every 20 measures of paddy why it all depends sometimes it is 6 and a half and sometimes it is 7 with 7 measures of fodder husk now sister calculate and you will see you get 6 years to the rupee not to speak of the fodder husk instead of seven your rice does not go into the stomach of rangi or madi but goes to fatten some dissipated red man in his own country now do you understand sister well if i say yes what then and then you sow and your harvest is grand this year and more people come from bombay and sholapur and they bring bigger carts and larger money sacks then you say they pay 20 rupees a khanda this year if i keep my rice it is all such a bother measuring it out to rangi and measuring it back from her and quarreling over her measures and there are the rats and the worms and the cattle and then you have to pay revenue and bhattas interest and who knows the rice may go down in price as it did 2 years ago so you go to the agent and say all right i can give you 44 khandas and as he opens his bag and counts out rupee after rupee in the backyard they are already saying 3 hmm 4 hmm 5 and the goods extra hmm their gaping sacks before them night comes and our granary is empty as a morning house then the next morning husking rangi meets you on your way to the river and says and when shall i come for the paddy mother let the sara come rangi we still last year's rice we haven't swallowed it all you say but rangi knows the truth and when the rainy season comes and there is little rice to eat she will pass by your door and spit three times at you in the name of her children 
then she too will go to work on the fields with her husband and so to work on a field that hardly needed one and the children will go foodless and the next harvest agents will come and bring veritable motor lorries such as they have in the skeffington coffee estate and they will take away all your rice and you will have to go to subachetti and buy perhaps the very rice that grew in your field and at four years a rupee too the city people bring with them clothes and sugar and bangles that they manufacture in their own country and you will buy clothes and sugar and bangles you will give away this money and that money and you will even go to bhat for a loan for the peacock blue sari they bring just goes with lakshmi and lakshmi is to be married soon they bring soaps and perfumes and thus they buy your rice and sell their wares you get poorer and poorer and the priors begin to starve and one day all but bhat and subachetti will have nothing else to eat but the pebbles of the himavati and drink her waters saying rama krishna rama krishna sister that is how it is oh i am no learned person explains nanjamma you have been to the city and you should know more than me but tell me my son does the mahatma spin the mahatma sister why every morning he spins for 2 hours immediately after his prayers he says spinning is as purifying as praying then my son i'll have a charkha but i can pay nothing for it you need pay nothing Sister, I tell you the Congress gives it free. Really, you mean it will cost me nothing? For, you see, I am so occupied at home and maybe I would never find time to spin. It's your sister and every month I shall come to ask you how many yards you have spun and every month I shall gather your yarn and send it to the city and the city people will reduce you for the cotton charges and for the rest you have your cloth you are a clever fellow to know all these tricks says nanjamma beaming have a cup of coffee murti and she goes in and brings out a warm cup of coffee and in a silver cup too and when he has finished drinking he goes down the street to see post office surya narayana post office surya narayana is already a gandhist he asks for two charkhas then he goes murti to pandit venkateshya and sanaf shastri and rangamma's widowed sister sitamma and her daughter ratan and kadamam field ramachandra and they all say oh yes my son oh yes and so he leaves the brahmin quarter and goes to the praya quarters and the prayas are so happy to see a brahman among them that they say yes yes learned one and left handed madanna's son chenna and bidal timaya's son bhima and old mota and one eyed linga and jack tree tipa all of them follow him home and to each one of them he gives a spinning wheel and a sear of cotton hemp and they go back with their spinning wheels upon their shoulders their mouths touching the ears with delight not a pie for this they would spin and spin and spin and if that brahmin boy was to be believed they would have clothes to wear blankets and shirts and lion clothes they said it was all of the mahatma when they were just by the village gate they saw a hefty bearded man sitting on the village platform distractedly smoking a cigarette the policeman whispered mota to bhima the same who was seen the other day but he has no uniform they sometimes prowl about like this they grew silent as they neared the platform and when they had passed into the prayer street they looked back and saw him jump down from the platform and thump past the temple corner on to the brahman street oh that rogue thank you